let's turn to Brexit, because uh, despite some optimism in Brussels and London, a deal is still not certain. DUP leader Arlene Foster and SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon, they're both setting out their uh, stalls in the negotiation trade-off. Let's get the latest now with the Brexit brief. Keeping the dream alive. Just days after tens of thousands took to the streets of Edinburgh to show support for Scottish independence, Nicola Sturgeon takes to the stage of the Scottish National Party conference in Glasgow. Going into the conference, the SNP leader once again raised the prospect of independence, contrasting it with political deadlock in Westminster. Meanwhile, the leader of Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party is in Brussels this week for three days of Brexit talks. Arlene Foster is meeting with Michel Barnier and representatives of EU member states. There's hope of a compromise on the Irish border. A breakthrough there would clear one of the last obstacles to a Brexit deal. And back in London, a boost for Theresa May. The percentage of Brits who have confidence in Theresa May's ability to get the right Brexit deal is up by 22% from last month and since her speech at the Tory conference. That's according to a poll by ORB International. Although a slim majority still thinks she won't deliver. The British public is perhaps hoping that May's famed fancy footwork can clinch a Brexit deal. Darren, you've been doing the rounds here in Brussels. I mean, should we be optimistic? What's going on? Well, it's really interesting. I think the mood music that we saw at the weekend from people like Jean-Claude Juncker and Donald Tusk, I think was a bit of political play, uh, game playing by the European Union, almost to put the pressure back on Theresa May uh, in order to try and mean that if there was no deal, it would be, of course, her, her fault. I think interesting today we saw the DUP leader, Arling Foster, here in this parliament, uh, where she gave a press conference and reiterated her red line, as she put it, uh, that there, will, there should be no border in the Irish Sea, separating Great Britain uh, from uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, her point is that she does not want to see any extra checks. Now, there had been a thought process that we we're going to see an alternative plan on this issue of the Irish border from the British government in the next couple of days. There are now rumours that that might not happen because ultimately the DUP, bizarrely, even though they only represent 30% of the people in Northern Ireland, even though Northern Ireland as a whole voted to remain inside the EU, if they do not like this deal, they have got the votes in the British Houses of Commons to, to essentially dump any deal that Theresa May signs with Michel Barnier. And that's why they matter. And as for Scotland, clearly one politician's problem is another's opportunity, and uh, Nicola Sturgeon clearly views this as a chance to ramp up the independence argument, though there were a whole series of uh, opinion polls at the weekend. It still shows that if there was a referendum tomorrow, for example, uh, independence would not pass, but if there was no deal when it comes to Brexit, it might just do. So that's how big the stakes are for the British government. I'll go to Nina because you said you had an idea on who's going to blink first. I'd like to know. Well, <laughs> I, think, I think as has consistently proven to be the case in the past two years of negotiations when you pit one against 27, the 27 tend to win. Uh, so I think the UK will blink first. I mean, but I have to agree with what Darren is saying, despite, you know, all the will they, won't they, no deal kind of talk. I think we're edging closer to a deal because fundamentally, ultimately, it is in everyone's interest to strike a deal and one of the biggest sticking points in the talks, that's the question of the Irish border, if there is no deal, that is not resolved. So I think where we're heading really is towards uh, the position where the UK kind of remains in the customs union. Yeah, so if you call the bluff of Theresa May, she said, oh, we're going to leave, but actually no. She's just, yeah, and I, 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 I think, I think right, people, seconds. people talk about it, and, and it's an actual thing to say that, of course, it is in everyone's interest to get a deal. Economically, Britain would be damaged, the EU would be damaged. But Brexit, is a, in Absolutely. its sense, was people voting against their economic self-interest to yes. a degree, mm -hmm. and there are people perfectly willing to say, we do not not want a deal if it's not a good deal, even if, again, it does Britain or indeed the EU more damage. So, you know, it's still really and difficult to judge. this discussion's not over because really the whole week is about really Brexit. Is. <laughs> All right, we have a lot more coming up on World Politics.